If you've heard about ChatGPT and seen everyone using it online, but you don't really know what it is, this video is for you. Today, I'm gonna walk you through what ChatGPT is and give you five ways that you can actually use it in your own life to make you more productive. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a chatbot developed by OpenAI, a leading artificial intelligence research organization. It is based on the powerful GPT-3 language model, which is trained on a large portion of the internet. This allows it to generate human-like text and engage in conversation with users. So the GPT-3 language model has actually been around for a little bit of time, but ChatGPT is relatively new. In order to access it, you just have to go to their website and make an account either by signing up with your email or even logging in with Google. Once you're in, it works basically like any other chatbot. You type in a question or an interaction and you get a response back. I'm gonna make a separate video on the basics of ChatGPT for if you don't know how to use it, so you can check that out right here. So let's get into use case number one, which is writing content. The obvious thing here is writing marketing or product copy, but I think there's actually a better way that you can use this even in your personal life for your own writing. The first thing that I like to use for is actually brainstorming and idea generation. A lot of times when you're writing, you may hit writer's block where you just don't know what to write about. So what you can do in that case is you can talk to ChatGPT and it can either do one of two things. It can give you a list of ideas to write about and give you even an outline for one of those specific ideas. Or secondarily, if you give it something that you've already written, you can ask it what it would say next. This isn't always exactly on point and perfect, and I wouldn't say that this is a final draft of something that you should use. Instead, it's kind of a starting point to utilize in your own writing and make it your own as you're continuing on with the writing process. More tactically, this also means that you can give it specific sentences or paragraphs and tell it to rephrase and make them sound a little bit better or even change your vocabulary a little bit. The other crazy thing that you can do is you can give it a passage from a writer that you really appreciate, like Paul Graham, and you can say, take my paragraph and write it in the voice of Paul Graham, and it'll actually give you a response to something like that. In my mind, ChatGPT in this case is more of a writing assistant than a automatic writer for you. You wanna incorporate it into your writing process. If you're interested in this idea and want a tool that actually helps you with this entire process, there is one that I recommend called Lex. It's made by the people over at Every, and it's doing a great job at incorporating AI into tools for writers. The next use case is using ChatGPT for writing code. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if you're serious and you really wanna use AI to help you with your code, the best solution is still probably GitHub Copilot because it's designed for that specific process. But ChatGPT does give some good outcomes. Again, in this situation, I think you want to think of ChatGPT as a coding assistant rather than something that entirely codes for you. You can provide it with a problem or a task and it's going to generate code snippets and suggestions for how to approach that problem. This is especially great when you're getting started with something like a React project and you want some quick boilerplate code to get your project off the ground. The bigger thing that I've actually been using it for that I really like is getting through bugs and specific problems that I can't solve. So for example, if I'm going through the Odin project and I'm stuck on a specific problem, rather than digging through Google and going through Stack Overflow, which is a great solution, but rather than doing that, I found myself sometimes entering the problem or the specific aspect of the problem that I'm stuck on into ChatGPT and see what it comes up with. This is helpful because you can kind of iterate and actually talk to the bot on its own rather than Stack Overflow where it's kind of already people have had a conversation or if you, even if you do comment, you have to wait for someone to respond. This is much more direct response and you can tinker with your code with ChatGPT to get to a solution faster in my opinion. All right, so the next one's actually pretty simple and it's using ChatGPT as a personal productivity assistant or a to-do list. Essentially, you provide it with a list of all of your to-dos and tasks and it's gonna provide you with reminders and suggestions of how to prioritize that list. This is great as you're going through the day because you can check things off and come back and just ask ChatGPT what's left to do or what it thinks you should do next given the amount of time that you have. And it's a fun way to have an interaction with your to-do list rather than to just treat it as a list of things that you have to consistently checkbox every single day. The next item is great for anyone who's trying to learn something and that is using ChatGPT for making flashcards. So for this, basically what you do is you provide ChatGPT with a list of terms or concepts that you want it to make flashcards for and you ask it to make those flashcards and it'll actually spit out a list of flashcards that you can then use and go through. There's some caveats here because you do have to be a little bit specific of what the flashcards should look like and how specific they should be. And especially if you're using tools like Anki and you want to export these into Anki, there has to be some more functionality built in. But if you're more specific with your prompts, you can actually get it to generate a good amount of flashcards that can be useful and aid in your learning. Again, I think this is a very early use case for ChatGPT and I don't think that flashcards are actually gonna live inside of the chatbot itself. But I think this is a great way to generate some things on the fly that you can then take and incorporate Right into your other apps like Anki or Quizlet or whatever you use for flashcards, but this makes the process a lot faster. Again, it's not about solving the problem within the app entirely, it's about 
taking ChatGPT to make things that you have to do every day a little bit easier, and then using the output that it gives you to put those in the other apps that you make. And I think inevitably in the future, there's gonna be a list of apps that do all of these things that you wanna do in ChatGPT today, but they're gonna have dedicated apps for specific things like flashcards. The last use case I have for ChatGPT today is a personal reflection tool. And this is a little bit more involved and sometimes not even fully capable in ChatGPT alone. You sometimes have to use the playground on the OpenAI website. But essentially what you do is you provide ChatGPT with a list of your journal entries. And things, this could be a, you know, paragraphs, sentences, blurbs, whatever it may be. You say, you know, here is a list of my journal entries and I want you to keep these and remember them because I want to ask you questions about them and kind of reflect on what I've written. And so this is really interesting because if you actually take the time to do this and if you have a repository of journal entries, you can give it journal entries from your past self and then you can almost chat with your past self. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of someone on Twitter who's built this for themselves. They use the OpenAI Playground, but it's very similar. And if you want, they have kind of a process tutorial of how to do that. But essentially they provided specific journal entries from their younger self, and then they were able to talk to their younger self through the AI, and the AI was able to respond based on the input that it got from the journal entries. So I think that if you are interested in personal reflection and mental health and kind of just learning more about yourself, I think this is an interesting way to do that. I don't think it's the end all be all solution, but it is one interesting way to learn more about yourself. So those are all of the use cases that I have for ChatGPT for you today. If you found any of those valuable, I would encourage you to take them and incorporate them in your own life. And if you have other ways that you're using ChatGPT that I didn't list, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you're new to ChatGPT and you want to get a little bit more understanding of how to use it, I have a beginner video of the basics and the foundations of how to actually use the app so that you too can have these outputs and use them in your own life. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.